let's uh, read this uh, no interview uh, support from fans kept me going i was almost ready to retire after the summer finals this might sound very harsh guys this might sound very harsh but i have worked with players that are like this and It's like, I have pity and sympathy for the person that is Noah, right? But this is the job. You get me? Like, this is the job. Like, you're getting paid because there's a lot of eyeballs on you and people view it as an entertainment product. Product. People are going to interact with the, the entertainment product in the most stupid, most wicked ways. Because for me, I watch Pro League. I consume it. I'm very deep into it. I like look at the details. But most people don't have the time to to look at league the same way. They're a fan of their favorite team, fan of their favorite players. Some people like to see people win. Some people like to see the names that they recognize, the teams that they recognize, whatever. And when they inter interact with the entertainment product, there's levels of engagement. You know, it's like if I watch Formula One, I do it in a very stupid way, but that's okay. You know. Interacting with an entertainment product in a stupid way is completely normal. You have very varying degrees of, let's say, accurate interest. For any player, they're going to be under massive scrutiny. If they're not, the game is dead. If they are not, they are the, the, the team is dead, the game is dead. That's, that's the job. Why is Faker as good as he is? And why is he the go-to the game? It's because he has managed that scrutiny really really fucking insanely well that's it noah played a fine finals he played a very very fine finals i don't think he was the issue ad carry is a is, is a role that isn't super super important right now in the meta uh, i think that he played a fine finals i don't think that he was the issue fanatic as a team are weaker macro wise and that was the biggest issue they choked the Amon Giga Heart in terms of uh, playing out a very winning position, and they got tore apart by G2. I think that is the one game that stands out as a massive failure for Fnatic. Uh, but support from fans kept me going. I was almost ready to retire. Like, if you're ready to retire under heavy scrutiny, like most of the time, if that's where you are at, you're not going to make it, you know? But I think that the most curious thing for me is that this is something that publicly has been known, that it was known already last year. Last year in the finals for for uh, Fnatic, these issues were also there. Like, this is something that was discussed. Like, I think I think the main question is, is like, what is, what is Fnatic actually doing to help him? And if so... Are those things working? And if so, is 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 Noah's issues beyond help in the current environment? You know. Uh, all right, let's let's take a look. Fnatic unfortunately lost against G2. What are your first thoughts after this match? I've been trying my best all year. I thought I was getting better. It still wasn't enough to beat G2. It's mega sad, you know, to lose in the finals against G2 again. It sucks, yeah. And that's that's the that's the crushing path of competition. Competition is running as fast as you can in a race that you don't know the distance. That is competition because you don't know how fast the enemy is going to improve you don't know what they're going to have what kind of issues they have you don't know what kind of a opponent you're gonna face on the day so you race you fucking run as hard as you can every fucking day because you don't know who you're going to be up against so you race against yourself right um how do you feel about your and your team's progress uh, over the last few months do you still see positive from this series and season i think our team got better at both micro and macro aspects but still not good enough to be g2 I think for me, I feel like there was a regression. Uh, there was a regression. I do think that Razor didn't perform as good as I would hope, even though I think that he was he's a, the best player on the team. You know, I think that he didn't perform as good as I hoped. I think that the early game became less sharp. And I do think that the series against Mad Lions is a series that they could have lost on a different day. Uh, and uh, I thought that they were going to be a lot stronger in that one. I think I'm okay, okay. I don't think it's enough to win against Asian teams and worlds either, so we need to prove on that. But yeah, we lost many times. We still tried to come back and improve, so I'll try to improve again, I guess. Uh, this season has in, been incredibly long, and today's match has some really drawn out games. How are you holding up? Today was exhausting, but honestly, this whole year has been tiring. We only had a two week break in nine months because we went to MSI and EWC. Still, I think we could have won today for sure. Even if I'd taken one step, we could have won. It wasn't that far off since the enemy was just as tired. But yeah, I'm mega tired now, I guess. 
I think if 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 after the finals you're not tired, you've done something wrong. Um, I, I think a very common conversation about work-life balance and like people being overworked. The truth is, if you're trying to be the best at something, you're going to have to do things that are quite unhealthy. Plain and simple. You're going to be doing things that are quite unhealthy. Every sport that you can think of, people have joint damage, you have wrist damage, hip damage, knee damage, shoulder damage. Like in, in every sport, you are pushing your body to the extreme. And some people are way better at doing that. And those are the players that survive and have very long careers and have an easier time doing so. That to me is talent in League of Legends. And some players have a way harder time doing that. I think if you're not tired at the end, it's like I, I every year I've gone to Worlds, after Worlds, I have experienced heavy, heavy burnout. When you are in the work, your body kind of suppresses your body kind of suppresses itself in a way that is, um, you know, at least for me, it suppresses any sickness, any pain, anything, and it all just comes out. It just all comes out. And I'm just sick for two, three weeks, uh, like sick, sick in a way where every, my body just fucking extremely hurts. I just need, I, like, all I want to do is sleep for 18 hours a day. Um, like, it's, 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 it's a mess. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I, someone in the chat said two weeks off in nine months. Most jobs get that for the whole year. I don't know. Sounds normal. Well, the difference is right. It's like the, the work week is 60 to 80 hours and you only get one day off in a week. And that one day off is not even a day off. That day is used to prepare for the week. Like you, you, you don't like, like Sunday is not like, you don't go out to party. You don't go out to do shit. You don't go out to do dumb shit. You are using that day to prepare for the next day. It's like being in fucking an M MMA camp. You know, it's like, you, you don't go home. So it's like two weeks off in nine months. You can't compare this job to anything else. I, I don't think it's, it makes sense. Obviously it's like, if someone tells me you're oh, coal miners, whatever, like there's definitely like more physically demanding, more dangerous jobs, and it is a privilege to play, uh, but we shouldn't uh, underestimate the amount of hours that are being put in uh, for anyone to play, you know? Like even, even in, in any field, like even like, let's say, let's say right now, uh, the AI race, right? There's an AI race, you have companies like AMD, Nvidia, you have uh, Microsoft, you have uh, Facebook, Meta, of course, uh, trying to, you know, Google, uh, th th like th these, these companies as well with the highest performers, probably the people that work there, they are fucking destroying themselves too, because they want to win. Right. I, I think in any field where you want to be the best and the pioneer at something, you're going to have to make sacrifices, plain and simple. If you had to pinpoint one thing that was missing in order to be G2 today, what would you say that one element was? We talked about that after the games. When well, the enemy was on silence, we didn't respond well. The mark was better. Scrims the same match was very different. We didn't have that well today. So yeah, we need to work on that. I think this is a very, very common mistake. I've made this mistake too. Uh, I don't know if Fnatic made this mistake, but I think that practicing macro concepts uh, really, really don't show themselves in scrims that well. I think scrims tend to be very volatile, 15 to 20 minute games that are decided. I think practice against G2 is probably very healthy because they don't FF games. And I think that no one should FF games because you should really apply. It's like your, your mold for understanding what to do next is applicable regardless of the game state. Like if you're losing very heavy, if you're losing by 50, 60, 70, 80, 200% doesn't matter because you you have to look at the details of the game through the same lens and look at the same variables. Uh, sometimes, very often, most players, if not almost every player, look at the game state through the lens of their own emotion rather than looking at it as an exercise to figure out the next step. And I think this is usually the biggest difference between the best teams and the teams that are second place is that they try to figure out the puzzle, no matter how messy it is, you know, I got say, I, I, one time I, I was in this, uh, in, in this, uh, candy shop and basically they sold uh, kids toys too. So I checked them out. They had some Pokemon stuff and they were selling puzzles. There was one puzzle that had only, it was like a thousand piece puzzle with only Pikachu faces. All same color, similar expressions. There was just Pikachu faces, you know, faces of Pikachu. All the pieces look the same. Uh, like 
sometimes the game looks that difficult, but you just kind of fucking try to search for a piece that makes sense. Maybe you make a face and then suddenly maybe the, the new things uh, appear. Uh, you're not going to look at the mountain that is attached to come back in the game and be overwhelmed by it because that's an emotional response, right? Uh, but I think usually when it comes to aligning on these concepts is usually through conversation and through vote reviewing. It's way better than screaming, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, many teams would see finishing second and consistently contending for top sword as a big accomplishment. For Fnatic, it feels like a disappointment. How do you personally view your season? I have a lot of guilt and regrets. I feel like I disappointed many people and I disappoint myself too. I was trying my, I think, I, like my impression is, obviously I don't know Noah, I've had some interactions with him in person. I don't know him at all. But I, I, it just seems like always he just cares too much about what the fuck people think. It just seems to be such a weight. Um, he just cares so much about what people think. Uh, if there, I feel like I disappointed too many people. Um, and I disappoint myself too. Like this, this is what should matter. I was trying my best today. Like if this is too many people, if he's referencing to his teammates, that's okay too. Like I think that you should you should only really carry shame and disappointment from people that you care about, in my opinion. Uh, and I'm, I don't think that disappointment and shame is necessarily always a bad thing. Um, obviously, they have a very negative connotation, but if it makes you better, it is, you know, useful. Maybe it's not a good thing, but it's useful. I was trying my best today to win and make the fans happy, but we wouldn't. We couldn't. So to make the fans happy, we couldn't. It's not the end of our run, so I'll try to get first, even if I'm not with this team next year. I don't know for sure what will happen, but I'll try my best still. Now this this is kind of uh, grim to say, you know. Um, with your recent performance along June, are you able to see yourselves one of the top ADCs in Europe? Or is it hard to see that after this loss? Actually, I still think I'm one of the top ADCs in the league, and I've improved a lot this year. If I keep improving, I believe I can be the best too. But I can't say for the show that right now because I've beaten everyone except G2. I still don't have the experience to win against Hansam in the finals. I need to beat him first before I can say I'm the best. But honestly, I think I've improved a lot this year. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think the issue for Noah is that I think he set the tone rather high in the first nine regular split games he played in summer of 2023. And I think that... After setting that tone, I think that he set a, a rather high standard for himself. And I think that there's been many situations where he doesn't reach that standard and his presence with gold isn't felt. I think that as a laner, Noah has been really good in terms of getting advantages early, really, really good. But I think that his impact as the game progresses really, really diminishes. And I think that's where he's lacking. Um, and I think that Noah is a great laner. But I think that his impact later on in the game is something that we will need to see more of. But I think in the finals he played good. So I don't want to like put a bad light on Noah. Because I think in the finals he actually played decent. But this is a meta where, where you don't need to do much as an AD carry. I'm going to be honest. AD carry is, is, is a very, very easy role to play. I think that right now we're in the meta where being... If your AD carry is the best player on your team, you're probably going to suffer. Right? Do you agree that he has improved? I think it's very hard to say. I, I think that usually when it comes to like improvement for players, what they notice the most is their view of the macro. Uh, and I don't know if that's something that he is, uh, you know, has improved uh, or not. The, this meta, as mentioned before, it's, it's a meta that is kind of stale. We definitely need rest. We'll take one or two weeks off before we start, we start playing, playing again. After that break, we can come back more relaxed and ready to try harder. Personally, I feel like I'm mega choked in the summer finals. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, but I worked hard on fixing that, and I don't think I choked today. I just think the enemy was better. Yeah, fair play. I agree here. That means we can improve, and it sucks right now, but I see some positive things. I know I can fix my mental issues and show a better version of myself. Even on the international stage, I keep trying harder. I think, honestly, if Fnatic just won that game one, I would have been very happy with them. No joke. I think if they won that game one, I would have been very happy. Re even if they lost the series, G2 is the better team. G2 is the better team, and uh, you have opportunities to beat them with good timing, right? If they underperform, but let's be honest, G2 is the better team. If Caps and Mickey are in form, there's no team that is going to beat them in Europe as long as the rest of the players are serviceable. But I think that Hans Sama is the best AD carry, and I think BB has the com in the conversation of being the best uh, top lane, of course. Uh, it's just that uh, I, th I think you don't beat them. I think just that game one is the biggest disappointment. Now I can f I know I can fix my mental issues and show a better version of myself. Even on the international stage, I keep trying harder. It was kind of weird that the focus, like I, I was skimming the Fnatic subreddit. 
I feel like always they regurgitate like the same talking points, like Bardo out. It's like they need someone to 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 help Noah, whatever. You know, like I I think that Noah didn't like if if you look at it through the standpoint of Noah, I think that he made an improvement. But at the same time, it's like the the quality of that summer finals was so low, so it's not a high bar to overcome because how he threw those games was like really like beyond comprehension. Going into Worlds, what do you consider minimum achievement for it to be seen as success? I think if we can show our best, I don't really care about the outcome. If we play at our best, I believe we can go far, even against top teams like Genji or Billy Billy. No fucking way, by the way. No fucking way. No fucking way. This is a massive meme. Uh, I think there is no way in hell that they can touch Genji or Billy Billy. No way. Uh, they're definitely strong teams, but I think that team has a lot of potential. Uh, this has been the story of Fnatic the whole two last years, and I think it's time to come to terms that this dynamic. Obviously, he doesn't get to say this, but I'm just commenting, right? I'm not. I don't have an issue with Noah saying this. He should be saying this. I'm saying from my point of view, you know, as 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 as, as just a commentary. Okay, I think. It's something that I wanted to add, right? It's like in the conversation of dealing with shit, it's like Han Sama. Look at look how Han Sama has dealt with shit. It's like Han Sama like experienced more scrutiny than, than Noah did. For many, many reasons. Han Sama never said shit, bro. Ne Han Sama never reacted bad, never nothing fucking with with like a machine. He he proved us wrong by playing, you know, he he proved the, the critics wrong by playing. Like Hans gets so much shit, like he just gets gets shit on, and that's the job. That's the job, bro. Like when I was on coaching, I got so much shit. That's the job. That's the job. If that breaks you, cracks you, wrong job. Plain and simple, you know. Plain and simple. You pick Ziggs in game four, which is popular in the SK with players like Gumi Yushin Pace. Was this inspired by those matches? Might be some with Ziggs in the future. I practiced Ziggs about one or two months ago in summer because there's so many LPL and SK games with Zim Ziggs was effective. I thought Ziggs could be good, especially in AD mid metal, since so you need to have AP on the size of the map. I plan to use him. I think he was good pick against Jesus because he matched well with Hans Sama's champion pool. Still plays things like Draven and Ash. However, in the last game, my macro play in the mid game wasn't great. I still think we can pull out Ziggs again in the future. Do you have any words for Fnatic fans? You know, haters gonna hate. Yeah. Haters gonna hate. So why give a fuck? Why give a fuck, brother? Even top players like Vega or get criticism. Yes, you should let that bother you. Just keep trying your, trying your best. People come around if you prove yourself. Yes. Yes. I want to thank Fnatic fans for the support. I've recently leave a lot of hate, but the support from fans really helped me get me going. I was almost ready to retire after the summer finals, so thank you, and I hope to show a win next time if I can. You know, this is, this is the right way to view things. You know, it seems like someone gave him the right advice. I think this is the the right outlook. Everyone gets shit on, bro. Messi, Ronaldo, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Faker, Trovi, anybody, anybody, bro. Other, like if people, if people, if people don't get hate, if like hate is such a strong word, like if you don't get criticism or people are talking shit about you, like it just means people don't give a fuck. And that's a bad thing, bro. That's a bad thing. Obviously, it shouldn't fucking cross uh, the line where people are like fucking being, you know, malicious to the point where it can get dangerous or, you know, obviously there are lines. But I'm saying people are going to shit on you. People are going to praise you. Like, the same way people are going to praise you blindly too. It's like when I was criticizing Noah, right, when he was playing bad in summer, uh, I was getting shit for criticizing Noah. And that's that's a part of the process, bro. There's gonna people. They're gonna be. There's gonna be people that are delusional about your performance too, and that's equally dangerous. Equally dangerous. It's just that you need to understand where where the opinions are coming from, right? It's like if 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 it's it's like getting advice from people you don't respect at all. But anyhow, like. I, I hope Noah succeeds, you know. I, I, I do think that... I know some players, I think that the best thing that they can happen to them is that they are put in work environments where they need to do a lot more. 
I think the best thing that happened to Razork, the best thing that happened to Razork was that he had to play with a team that had so many flaws. In spring and in winter of 2023, Razork had to face a tough decision. Either the team is going to not do shit or he's going to have to do something about it. And I think that, I think that for a player like Yike and Noah, I think these players need to slum it up a bit. I think these players need to slum it up a bit. And I think that's going to be like the best thing for their career progression. Because both of these players jumped into like a premier fucking top two, top one team slotted in. Life is so damn easy, you know? Life is so damn easy. You gotta build resilience and agency, you know? This might sound uh, this might sound uh, crazy, but I think if if G two had Razork, I think that they, I I would predict that they would make top three at Worlds if they had Razork. I think with Razork they make top three at Worlds. I think the only teams they wouldn't beat is Billy Billy and Genji. I think that they farm everybody else, not farm, but I think they would beat everybody else. No, I wish I wish the best for Noah. I wish I wish the best for Noah. I wish the best for everybody, bro. Like, I think I think uh, anybody likes a good uh, underdog story. You know, it's like how how hype is it that Han Sama is playing so fucking well? You know, Han Sama's always played good. It's just that his mistakes are all like just fucking eye poppingly like crazy. You know, like you have nightmares about those mistakes. You know, and that kind of removes the spotlight on all the good things that he does. But Han Sama's been pulling bands for fucking two years now. And uh, I think that Han Sama is, is, is a fantastic player, you know? But for someone that looks up so much to 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 his peers, like Rula and so forth, uh, he should take some lessons from them, you know? <laughs> 